Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for joining us here. I, I was just warned that our time has, uh, has been cannibalized by 15 minutes. Then, <laughs> unfortunately, or fortunately, our team prepared about 200 slides, so I may have to talk five seconds per slide, so there's more time to, to, for the open forum with Mr. Rufino, our boss at ULI. Anyway, let's get started. I, I wish we just do open forum na lang, but naka-prepare na eh. But maybe just following the conversations this morning, Metro Manila, why am I here? 1975 till 1977, I was team leader for the World Bank funded Metro Plan Manila, Metro Manila Land Use Transportation Development Study. And before that, my immediate boss, program director was Apollo Pukaban, Manila Bay Region Strategic Plan. Then we were helping Pete Prado, who unfortunately just passed away, for the National Physical Framework Plan. And right after Metro Plan Manila, while working in Metro Plan Manila, I was named hired by the ruler of Dubai to bring Dubai from the fourth world into the first world in 15 years. They were able to do it in 10 years. And Cora, who was commissioner for planning uh, Metro Manila, she was saying, and, uh, and Commissioner Linda Hornilla, the size and governance. And I have been to 2,000 cities in 69 countries, having done work in 39 countries. There are only five regions of success. Visionary leadership, number one. Uh, and then number two is strong political will. Number three is good planning. Good urban planning, or at least appreciation of good urban planning. Number four is good design, like architecture, engineering, and the sciences. And then number five, good governance, or good management. And Chief is here, he used to be a uh, PMS head and uh, NEDA director, now very successful in the private sector. And what's happening in our country, it's always been private sector led, and the government is in a cuts up situation. Another one is we're very, very slow to reforms. It's probably one reason why majority voted for Mayor Duterte. I think all of us, even those who did not vote for him, we really wanted change and reform. And many of the issues we're discussing today, we've discussed you know when we were students of the University of the Philippines, the School of Urban Regional Planning. And we were very lucky that time, 73 to 74, that's why I had to work for government. It was the United Nations, UP, and, and Department of Public Works, Transportation and Communications, Planning and Project Office that sponsored my master's degree. And, and we had so many foreign experts. Every time we have a foreign expert here, like uh, relatively recently, uh, Al Gore was here. He was front page news. Everything he said, we discussed it when we were students, addressing the hazards before they become disasters. Every time we get a foreign expert, they get headline. And sometimes we among planners here, like we, are better, we seem to be better recognized abroad than in our own country. We had a presentation from NEDA, and they talk, they talk about uh, 2040. After the big earthquake in Kathmandu, uh, Nepal, the Buddhist organization, Chuchi, who helped us, who gave 3 billion pesos worth of uh, assistance in the Yolanda Corridor, they hired me, they hired us, Palawak Sources, Palawak Architecture, to design a cancer hospital, uh, university, and three schools in Kathmandu. And you know what? To design them to last 1,000 years, 40 generations. 100 years is only four generations. So you can see in here, having done work in 39 countries, we Filipino professionals, we seem to be better appreciated abroad than in our own country. And, and, and we keep bringing in. And I think one of our disadvantages, we don't have blonde hair and blue eyes, I so jokingly. But anyway, let's go now. So Metro Manila lessons learned global practices and revolutionary ideas. The be best practices, when we practice this abroad, we get paid and recognized. When I talk about it in our country, they call me a revolutionary, revolutionary ideas. So it's best practices abroad, 
You introduce us here. You are just a local expert. You are not a foreign expert. It's revolutionary. And we'll see how, how we came this way. And so global best practices, the top seven cities in the world, green cities, smart cities, livable cities, sustainable cities, resilient cities. What can you see there? From Asia, Seoul, Korea, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Why? They had the wrong, the, the correct models of urban planning. European cities, vertical cities, smart cities. And what did we have in the Philippines? Los Angeles and Hollywood. I've spoken to three mayors of Los Angeles, and they were telling us, Urban Land Institute, American Planning Association, American Institute of Architects, they were telling us the Los Angeles planning, which is automobile-oriented, is a 70-year-old mistake. The gated communities are mistakes also. And every time I talk about opening up our gates, I, I live in, we live in two gated communities also. Our friends and neighbors, they are so upset when I talk about opening up the villages because we are part of the problem. We can be part of the solution. And you can see in the list there, you cannot see Los Angeles, not one city from the Philippines. In Seoul, Hong Kong, and Singapore, what do they have? Vertical urbanism. Hong Kong, for instance, if we use the density of Hong Kong, all the world's seven billion population, we can all fit in the state of Texas. And, and uh, Hong Kong is 71% open space. In 1986, Singapore had 36% open space. Now with more population in Singapore, they have 45% urban forest. If we look at Metro Manila, we had former officials of Metro Manila here. What was the open space in 1986? And what is the open space 2016? And you can go around our cities, and open spaces are the lungs of the city. If you compare our cities to a human body, the lungs of the city are the parks and open spaces. The arteries are the roads and waterways. And the high traffic generators, major activity centers, are the central business districts, the, the major shopping malls, and so on. So if you compare our cities to a human body, our cities need a lung transfer because Binenta na is sold already our lungs. You need a heart transplant because our CBDs are the, the arteries are constrained, so we need a heart bypass, and our, our roads and waterways are full of cholesterol. So we, we, our cities are not decaying, it's dying. And people like us who have worked abroad, we feel so sorry. I just came back from Chicago yesterday. And what, Daniel Burnham planned Chicago 1909, and the Philippines 1905. While the Americans were here, we followed the, the principles of Daniel Burnham, city beautiful movement and city, city efficient movement. We followed that, boulevards, open spaces, River Sand, Pasig River, uh, the canals of Venice, the Steros of Manila, and Manila Bay, the Bay of Naples. Until now, Chicago is following the principles, although they keep updating it every year. And, and so Vancouver, one of the best green building policy, they have uh, 200 plus open spaces and parks. Next slide. So, uh, Stockholm, revival of the rivers and waterways, walkable and bikeable. Elsewhere in the world, the waterfront is a front door of development. In our country, it's a back door, garbage bin, sewage. It's a, it's a back of the house. Elsewhere in the world, in Dubai, they have to create artificial islands to have more front door waterfront developments. Next slide, please. Bicycle, Copenhagen. The prime ministers of Scandinavian countries, they bicycle to work. And earlier, uh, J.B. Arisito quoted uh, the mayor of Bogota, that the indication of first world city is when leaders, especially the rich, use the public transit. When you have leaders in a convoy of cars, it's a third world country. Uh, next slide, so they have Copina, uh, Portland, one of the longest bicycle lanes in the world. Freiburg, Germany, car free. No cars inside the city, only public transit, bicycle and pedestrians. 
uh, Barcelona, Spain, walkable com community. You may, many of us may have gone there, the Las Ramblas or La, La Alhambra. You only have one day, you just walk the street, you can see the culture, the history, the cuisine, the variety of uh, architectural styles and character. Hong Kong, I mentioned about Hong Kong. 71% open space and one of the smartest cities in the world. Next slide. Uh, Singapore, they recycle everything in Singapore because at the moment they're relying water supply from Malaysia. So it's a national defense issue also. So when in Singapore now you flush your toilet, you will eventually drink the same water, but of course it's treated. Next slide. Uh, Seoul, Korea. This, this picture had a skyway, then a road covering a canal. Next slide. And today this is the skyway, the urban road. They removed, the mayor removed it. I think she's now the president. Made it into a recovered the canal. Uh, that's really a truly a urban renewal. Next slide. Um, crime mapping in Santa Cruz, California. I'm a volunteer of, I, I told the new administration that I'm not available for any cabinet position. So I told the president that I can be a volunteer. During the National Heroes Day, I was inducted as a volunteer against crime and corruption. <laughs> and I volunteered that we'll do a crime mapping of the Philippines. And together with you guys here, maybe a corruption mapping and red tape mapping. I think our 1,600 uh, LGUs, uh, we have 1,600 mayors, 81 governors. I think 10% of them are very good. The 90%, uh, they can be better. But if you do a crime mapping, corruption mapping, red tape mapping, all foreign investors will just direct them to those who are who really address uh, corruption and criminality. Uh, Chicago, USA. Yeah, I, w I was just there. The mayor of Chicago invited us. They were so happy because the Chicago Cubs won after 108 years. They were describing to us the success of Chicago uh, from many aspects. And the, for the former Sen uh, mayor of Chicago I had a conversation with him on his style of governance. And you know what he told us in the forum, the Council for Tall Buildings? The government must be the exemplar, not the exempted. Leaders of government must be the exemplars, not the exempted. And I told that in a previous leader, and I was not invited anymore after saying that. Quote, <laughs> the government must be the exemplar, not the exempted. And uh, Chicago today, one of the most vibrant economy in the world. I think their GDP is bigger than the Philippines, just a city. And we did a survey from the Council for Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat, of which I'm a country leader and, and a fellow. The Chicago Loop inside Chicago, comparing it with the cost of infrastructure in the low density gated communities, 100 times more expensive in the low density gated communities. So we told government in the US, why don't you increase the taxes of low density communities and reduce the taxes of higher density communities. In our country, the tax regime is reversed. When you have a condominium, you have a tax higher than you have a mansion in the middle of the city. And in 1998, the American Planning Association of which I'm a very active member again, we started shaming the big houses in the middle of the city. And the conclusion the American Planning Association was that uh, when you have a big house in the middle of the city, you have a larger carbon footprint. You have a larger environmental footprint because you are arrogating to yourself urban land resources. You are preventing more families to live closer to their places of work. You're encouraging more urban sprawl to encroach into the forests and the farms. So in the US, starting 1998, we from the American Planning Association were shaming big houses in the middle of the city. And I tried to introduce here, in the Makati villages, instead of shaming them, they shamed me. <laughs> so that's a big difference. We are in the central business district of Makati, and I must say I was former architect planner of Ayala Group. And 
Central, ganito kami sa Makati. Makati is how not to do it. Which you could extend it more with your family or further education and so on. Unfortunately, I'm like just one voice. But if the Philippine Institute of Environment Health Planning, we have more courage. And maybe we should add here politics, policy planning. We should add here patriotism or patriotic planning or patriotic architecture. So some of us, we know the problems, we know the solutions. We are so scared to speak out. I only have 61 million pesos in libel cases for allegedly maligning the good name of the Quran. And thank God I'm still alive. If, if 100 of us could just be more patriotic, more courageous in identifying the mistakes, the corruption, the criminality, we should be in the top 20 economies of the world. And next slide, Chicago. Uh, Venice, they know where the water, the flood lines are. This is St. Mark, uh, San Marco Piazza. Before the floods come, they put interconnected elevated walkways, and they still get tourists. Here, I think ever since I had consciousness in my life, we have the same areas get flooded every year. How come nobody implements elevated walkways, which we propose in San Juan? In the Smart City Plan we have for San Juan, got citation from Berlin, New York, and, and Shanghai. Next slide. Uh, Dubai, something close to my heart. While working on Metro Plan, I was invited to among 20 architects, planners, and engineers from 14 countries. We were named hard by the ruler. I did not even know where Dubai was. Dubai, 1965, did not have a single kilometer of paved road. This was the Dubai Creek and Bedu settlements. In the rule of Dubai, I understood he gave us only five instructions. Design Dubai as if there's no oil, because in 35 years, they will run out of oil. Make Dubai a pace setter city in the Middle East and North Africa. Then uh, make Dubai um, a garden city of the desert. We were importing garden soil from Pakistan, irrigation from Germany, and flowers from Holland. And number four was, uh, I forgot the other one, but the space sector. One thing that I like very much was every month or every year of service, we're given opportunity to go around the world and copy. That was benchmarking. And, and my colleagues, they went to the usual, London, New, London, Paris, New York. But London, Paris, New York took more than 100 years to be first world. So I, I searched around the world which are the cities that became first world in less than 15 years? So San Francisco, go west, young man. Gold rush, so from gold to trading post, construction boom camp, banking center, uh, education center, aerospace center, and now it's information technology center. So they were able to evolve. They didn't stop at gold. Then Hong Kong, how did Hong Kong get started? Opium and drugs. I'm not recommending it here, but you can see our situation now. May pag-asa pa tayo. So from opium and drugs, became a trading center, commercial center, shopping center, banking center, and uh, political refugees of uh, communist China, especially the Shanghai contingent. They brought with them the manufacturing skills and garment-making skills. Hong Kong also became a manufacturing center, garment-making skills, regional center, global center. And, and then Singapore. Singapore was kicked out of the Federation of Malaysia. You know why? Because they had short family names. The Bumiputras looked down on the Chinese. And they were so lucky, they had a Lee Kuan Yew, uh, a, a honor graduate of Cambridge. I think he just copied or inspired by Hong Kong without drugs, plus landscaping. In Singapore, if you plant and grow a tree for five years, it was tax deductible. And who were the landscape architects? Filipinos, IP Santos. What we call here Singapore vines, they call it in Singapore, Manila vines. So first five years, tax free. And when we were doing Dubai, Singapore was always in the conversation because 1977, every 20 minutes, 20, every 30 minutes, a major ship Calls, calls at port, port of Singapore. Every 20 minutes, a dwelling unit was turned over. Just like when you said, before they start building cultural centers and so on, every Singaporean must have a roof over his head. And then Zurich and Geneva, again, they accepted the 
the refugees of the world wars in Europe. The, the French and the Germans and the Italians. They brought with them to Switzerland chocolate making and watch making. So Zurich and Geneva started with watches and chocolates. Then became banking center, regional center, shopping center, and all of that. So all that conversation, I brought it back to Dubai as if Dubai has no oil. And that time, Dubai was 98% oil income. Today, Dubai is only 2% oil. Nine, they earn more from Emirates in the airports than oil. Sports tourism, shopping center, and so on. So I'm sharing this with you. We should really keep on changing and reforming. And after a master's degree at UP, working at Metroplan and so on, when we went to Dubai, it, it changed the whole storyline and planning because the logical process, data collection, problem identification, goals, uh, establish your goals, then alternatives, then your preferred plan. In Dubai, instruction of the ruler is no data is data. That's why, that's why we hired you from all over the world because you have international practice. No data is data. Make your assumptions. And then uh, we had the best experts all over the world to teach us. You know what they tell us? Planning is not so many kilometers of, land, of roads or hectares of land, but planning a city is just dancing with a big monster growing in complexity and size. And another instruction I was representing the planning department and architecture and planning, I was coordinating the utilities, establishing architectural controls that time because Dubai allowed engineers to design buildings. And everything was done within 15 years. And the, Dubai, the rule of Dubai instructed us, what is good for business, good for Dubai. For permits, you should approve them in one day. If there's anyone among the signatories, any objection, you have a fortnight, 14 days to justify your objection, or the permit will be automatically be approved. And the rule of us, because I'm paying you only six hours a day. We're working only up to 1.30. So you're thinking about your work only six hours. The businessman, it's his own name, his own money, his own reputation. And look at Dubai today. Every Dubai citizen, there are 10 jobs available. Every Dubai citizen, there are six tourists available. And Dubai has no personal income tax. I wish we could do that here because in our country, the corrupt and the smugglers are tax-free. But with just value-added tax, everybody pays tax. If they want to have value-added tax, you plant your own vegetables in your home so you don't have to eat in the restaurants. It, it's a... It's a it's a no-brainer. You, you don't have to be a genius to analyze it. So Dubai, 1965, no single kilometer road. In 1977, April, when we left for Dubai, our family, the Manila International Airport was 100 years ahead of Dubai Airport. Now Dubai is probably 200 years ahead of Metro Manila infrastructure. They're building the largest airport in the world, combined capacity of Chicago O'Hare, and, and uh, London Heathrow. That, that's a Dubai Creek today. That was dread, dreads. They borrowed money through Lloyds of London, leverage it against future income in oil. Why can't we do that? We can leverage it against future income in gold and silver and so on. They have more landscaping than Metro Manila, imported soil, irrigation, and borrowed money with a good plan, good development plan. So we just go, the Palm Islands, they only had 70 kilometers of waterfront, so Sheikh Mohammed decided to do the Palm Islands just to add artificially um, 2,000 kilometers of prime real estate. Uh, yeah. Maybe Raymond can talk about it later. He just came back from Dubai this morning. Next, next slide. So Dubai ports, one of the largest businesses in the world. And Al Maktoum International. By 2020, they're hosting the World Expo. I think this is about six or ten runways in Jebel Ali, Dubai. The tallest building in the world, 828 meters. Um, sometimes our colleagues in the environmental professions are against mega tall, super tall buildings. I'm a fellow of the Council for Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat. We're the ones certifying the tallest buildings in the world. And we found out it's more beneficial to go 
high rise. Like this 828 meters, you have uh, just to collect garbage, you go to one point. This is equivalent to 10 blocks of the city. So you have a place to live, workshop, and dine, learn and worship, and uh, with healthcare and wellness, and tourism. Because they earn a lot of money on the, on the viewing decks and so on, in one point. And the mayor of Chicago was telling us also, Chicago is smaller carbon footprint because of the high-rise buildings. If they went urban sprawl, uh, they would have, like the rest of the U.S., especially California, our model Los Angeles, we follow the density of Los Angeles, California, we need nine planet Earths. Nine planet Earth. And that's our model. Sometimes I see subdivisions advertising just like living in Los Angeles. If you have studied abroad, uh, especially urban planning schools, Los Angeles, how not to do it, and even the mayors of Los Angeles has announced it to the rest of the world. So there are so many good things about our country. We're number one in marine bi the, the biodiversity. We're now number one in boys' call centers. We're number one in sailors and seafarers. I'd like to believe we are number one in musicians. Because the 67 countries I visited, they're always Filipino musicians. We are number two in BPOs, and uh, we're number two in geothermal energy. We have the third longest coastline, and some countries, they go to war because they don't have a coastline, like Iraq invading Kuwait, or Dubai had to reclaim islands so we have more waterfront. We have, we're number four in gold, number four in shipbuilding, number five in all other mineral resources, and number 12 in human resources. And they say the Filipinos are the best global citizens of the world, unfortunately, outside the Philippines. From the 1930s to the 1970s, we were number two in Asia, second only to Japan. That's why the rest of Asia, they voted that time that Metro Manila had the highest development potential as a financial center. And we're competing against the Shah of Iran, who had so much money for Tehran, or Japan, the biggest contributor, ADB, for Tokyo. But the rest of Asia, they thought we would be number one as financial center. The Japanese agreed only, provided the president of ADB will always be Japanese. And if we address corruption, criminality, climate change, politics, poverty, pollution, infrastructure, incompetence, traffic and transportation, even HSBC in Goldman Sachs has uh, forecasted by 2025, the Philippines should be in the top 20 economies of the world. And by 2050, we are number 16 in the world. And I'm not surprised. By 2021, we'll be 500 years old as the Philippines. And with Western civilization, Metro Manila will be 450 years. And uh, at our firm, Palafox Houses, Palafox Architecture, where we're, where we're not too busy, we, we have not been officially appointed, we're doing a development vision the next 100 weeks and the next 100 years for the Philippines. So we really need the genuine reforms, unity and diversity, there are so much opportunities to, to rebuild, reform our country. Next slide. And we'll have 150 million population by 2050. That's only 34 years from now, 50 million more Filipinos. We'll need at least 100 new cities. Otherwise, the cities outside Metro Manila, they are now copying the mis mistakes of EDSA Corridor. They are not following the mistakes of Metro Manila. We know that because we just finished the planning in Zumbuanga. We're doing now Pampanga. And the mistakes of Metro Manila being repeated in the provinces. So th that's the growth of Metro Manila for the next so many years. And the central business district along um, EDSA. EDSA was planned by the American Corps of Engineers in 1945. We should have had six-year conferential roads. And EDSA was Highway 54, see conferential road number four, about 54 me uh, meters wide. Supposed to be a transportation corridor. It became a destination, the business district. And what's wrong about it? It's surrounded by low density gated communities, gated military camps, and gated cemeteries. A good example on how not to do it. We have 13 stations uh, along EDSA corridor, and around them again are low density neighborhoods and military camps. Elsewhere in the world, like London, Paris, New York, Singapore, Hong Kong, Tokyo, when you have a transit station, you have a higher density uh, uh, development, so you have more people within walking distance. When we designed Rockwell, the survey was none. 
we met from Manila and so we walked only 400 meters. And so we were able to convince the clients instead of doing another gated community, we go high rise and mixed use development. So it's people first, so social equity, then we talk about planet Earth or the environment, then we can talk about economic goals and, uh, and, and profit goals, and then culture, history, and heritage, and sometimes we don't have to write it spirituality, that's the integral ecology. One of my professors in the Harvard Graduate School of Design used to tell us, this century will be a rest century. Reimagine, replan, rearchitecture, redesign, reengineer, redevelop, renew, reduce, reuse, recycle, and hopefully we'll have urban renaissance. And green urbanism, I think we need one night to explain that. I only have last five minutes. So uh, green architecture. So most of our planning is mostly short-term and opportunistic. So we should have immediate action program, short-term, medium-term, long-term, and so on. Next slide. Immediate action, what can be done for the next 100 days. Next slide. So we, we, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like traffic and transportation, the discussion now, the same discussions we had when I was 23 years old. I'm already 66 years old. And 39 countries have listened to me already. And we invite foreign experts. What's wrong with it? We're all planners here, or most of us anyway. And I told our friends in the government, uh, Art Tugade and Mark Billiard and uh, Tom Orbus, uh, Tim Orbus, we told them, what's wrong with the solutions being put forward now? They're only looking at the supply side, not the demand side. The demand side is the land use. When you convert an open space into high-rise development, open space, pedestrian access. You make a high-rise, maybe you'll be generating 20,000 cars. And it's a corridor. There are five or six hierarchy of roads. Major artery, minor artery, collector road, residential access road, shopping access road. All of them are in EDSA corridor. And many years ago, we talked about 1976 congestion charging and so on. It seems they're all suffering from analysis paralysis. I think we just go on with these slides. So there are, in Dubai, we learned about the three kinds of infrastructure. Progressive infrastructure, these are the international airports, seaports, international schools and hospitals and hotels. Hard infrastructure, we know that, the roads and utilities. Soft infrastructure is the most important. The ease of doing business, no corruption, no red tape. I've added green and sustainable and institutional. You may have the best plans in the world, but if there are no institutions to implement them, nothing. And it order priorities, there are 20 kinds of urban transport. First is the uh, uh, walking, then bicycle, public transit. The last priority is the, the cars. Next slide. Uh, Bogota, the mayor of Bogota, he got uh, so many citations for uh, Curitiba. About 40 years ago, they were so lucky, their mayor was an uh, architect, urban planner, and most of the city council were planners and engineers. And you can see this bus stop here. The floor is the same as the floor of the bus. Even on a wheelchair, you can go around. Next slide. And this is in Shibuya, Tokyo. 60 seconds for the pedestrian green light, 60, uh, 60 seconds for the car traffic. And in Oxford City, of course, the next one in London, it's 3090. And you know in Makati, ganito kami sa Makati, near our office, the green light for pedestrians, uh, green light for cars, 99 seconds. Green light for pedestrians, 10 seconds. If you are in high heels, you'll never make it. Then we claim to be Makati walkable city. So tax steel sidewalks, next slide, you just go on now. So those with less in wheels should have more in roads. One third for people, pedestrians and bicycles. One third for trees and landscaping. One third for vehicles. And uh, ur urban renewal, we just go fast now. Next slide. Next, Pasig River. Uh, water transport, Manila Bay, Pasig River, and Laguna Lake. Uh, we started with the hazard mapping for San Juan before, and, and three levels of access. The street level, the elevated walkways, and elevated monorail to interconnect with the MRT and LRT, and addressing hazards like flooding, mitigation, and adaptation. Next slide. Uh, this is in uh, San Vicente, Palawan, where consultants are on here also. We won a citation in London uh, as one of the top eight best planned projects in the world today. And when Karima and my wife Wilma went to London to accept it, 
the downside of it, the land values became 7,000 per square meter. When we started planning, it was only 300 pesos per square meter. So again, the urban poor have been left out. Airports are gateways to a city, wrapping up now, maximizing our ports. Next slide. And turn your roof into gardens. And food miles. Where did the food come from? 1,300, 20 times one to 2121, we're working on that. Urban growth corridors, growth centers, you cannot address the problems of Metro Manila unless we develop the provinces. That's why I go for federalism. And University of Town, in Balanga, Agropolis, the farm in the city. Next slide. Santa Cruz Zambales, public markets for the, uh, for the farmers and so on. Next slide, we just go on. San Vicente again. Design really matters. Uh, no, human scale, let's full use of urban service. anti snap zoning, we discussed it this morning. Here we call it lean law. But in the state of Massachusetts, it's uh, inclusionary zoning, but the better known label is anti snap zoning. Bawalang snabero. Mixed use development, place to live workshop and dine. The one below is Pell Christ in, in the bow. Next slide. This was our first sketches in Rockwell. 8,000 per square meter, as is where is. When the plans came out, 120,000 pesos per square meter. Good plan helps, but one thing about it, when you do a good plan, again, the poor gets priced out. Next slide. Next, next slide, the high line in New York, the open spaces. Uh, Central Park, New York. Next slide. Next. I think we don't have enough time, this, uh, and so on. We just set the slide so we have more time for conversation. Thank you very much. You just continue these slides. Just roll it. Just roll these slides. That one is, uh, hold on, just one. In 2006, 60th anniversary of the United Nations, I was speaker in New York. I recommended to interconnect the whole world, six continents of the world, by bridges and railways. The first reaction was, what's this crazy Filipino talking about? The next day, people were congratulating me. They estimated the cost, cheaper than the Gulf War. So a peace and development initiative is cheaper than war and conflict. So I also presented we interconnect the whole Philippines with bridges and railways. It would only take from Lawag to Davao three hours with a maglet train. So postcards on the future, we send this to mayors on their birthdays. The uglification of our cities, and we send them a picture, postcards on the future. Some of them, they heard us, some of them are very upset. Maybe we can do it together as planners and the developers. We take pictures of the uglification of the cities and we'll help you come out with the postcards from the future. So we just roll this now. It's better than writing your complaint in, in writing. We do it in urban design perspectives. And uh, I think we all like to live in uh, master plan, urban plan, um, environment-friendly cities, communities that are better connected, more livable, more walkable, uh, safer, better lighted, uh, integrating places to live, workshop, and dine, learn and worship with some 24-hour cycle activity centers. Thank you very much for the extension.